Here in section 3.4, we're talking about marginal functions in economics. In this section, we're going to take everything that we've learned from section 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3, and we're going to start looking at some applications for finding derivatives. The first application that we're going to look at is marginal cost. In economics, the uh, marginal cost is the actual cost incurred in producing an additional unit of a certain commodity. And the important part here is that it says given that the plant is already at a certain level of production. So for example, you are producing 250 units currently. You want to know should we grow, should we expand, is it going to be worth it? Are we going to increase our profit? What happens if we produce one more unit, 251 units? What is the additional cost incurred in producing one more unit? Um, the, the way that we're going to go about doing this is we're going to take the derivative. So it says here that the marginal cost is approximated by the derivative of the cost function, uh, which is the rate of change of the total cost function evaluated at the appropriate point. Okay, and we're going to talk about, we're going to compare two things. We're going to compare the actual cost and we're going to compare the marginal cost and we're going to show how it is approximated. Okay, we're going to use the derivative. It's a really good approximation of the actual cost. So when, in this section, when we say the word marginal, we're talking about derivative of. So if I say the marginal cost function, we're going to take the derivative of the cost function. So let's compare the actual cost incurred and the, uh, the approximate with a marginal uh, cost function. All right, so let's first of all talk about the actual cost, okay? So let's say that right now we are producing 250 units. So I'm going to call this first point uh, 250. This is going to be x. This is the number of units. And the cost will be the y value. So let's say the cost in producing 250 units is $45,500. So let's say that we're thinking about uh, increasing this to 251 units. So here's 251 units, this little purple dot here. So the cost to produce all 251, 251 units would be $45,599.80. All right, so if I wanted to know the actual cost, let's think about this as a slope. So here we have a curve. Um, let's think about this as a slope. We're going to go to the right one, and then we want to know how much we're going to go up. So we go to the right one unit, and then we know how much we want to go up. Well, let's find the difference between those two y values. So we, we take the slope formula, which is our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is going to tell us the actual, uh, the actual change here from producing 250 to 251. So we're going to do 45,000. $599.80, and we're going to subtract off the y value from the second, or from that first point, $45,500. And then we're going to subtract 251 minus 250. So we end up with $99.80 over 1, and this is what we call the actual additional cost for producing the next unit. So if this is how much it cost me to produce 250. This is how much it cost me to produce 251, so the difference between those two is the actual cost. Now, instead of going through that process and finding the slope between those two points and finding the actual cost, what we are going to do in this section with the marginal cost is we are going to approximate this using the derivative. So what we're going to find is c prime of x. We're going to find the um, the derivative of our cost function. So let's do that. So we're going to use our power rule. So the derivative for 8,000, that's a constant, so that's just 0. So we got that. Uh, let's go to the next term, 200x. The derivative of that would be 200. 
And then here we're going to use our power rule. We're going to multiply 2 times uh, negative 0.2. That gives me negative 0.4. And we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent, so we get x. So what we're going to do is we're basically finding the slope of the tangent line at the point 250. So notice that we're using the current level of production. Okay. So if I want to know how much it's going to cost approximately to produce one more unit for my current level of production, notice that we have a very, very small difference in the actual cost. Um, so we have our actual cost here, and then we have our approximation. Um, we are going to plug 250, the current level of production, into our derivative, into that marginal cost function. So we get 200 minus point four times 250, and we end up with 100. So this is the approximate additional cost for producing the 251st unit. Okay, so we plug in the current level of production into the marginal cost function and that gives us basically the slope of the tangent line at that point, which tells me a good approximation. If I go to the right one and up one, it gives me a really good approximation for that actual cost. Okay, so for our purposes, the marginal cost will represent the actual cost. All right. Now, should we increase production? Well, we need to know a little bit more information than just the marginal cost. We need to know basically the marginal profit, we want to know marginal revenue, um, but for now we're just going to look at the idea of marginal cost. All right, so it says here, here to compute the marginal cost of an additional unit, then we're going to find uh, the marginal cost function, we're going to find the derivative of the cost function, and we're going to plug in the current level of production. Okay, so that's important current level of production. Uh, the marginal cost measures the rate of change of the total cost function and provides a good approximation for the actual cost to produce the next unit, assuming that we are already at an X level of current production. All right. So let's see here an example one. Uh, a subsidiary of this electronics manufacturer um, makes portable DVD players, and management has determined that the daily total cost of producing these DVD players in dollars is given by this cost function. Okay, let's make sure we know what X stands for. It says X stands for the number of DVDs, the number of DVD players produced. So our first um, task here is to find the marginal cost function. And that just means, we said marginal means derivative of. So we're gonna find the derivative of the cost function. So C prime of X, we're gonna use the power rule. So I'm gonna multiply three times the constant in front. Reduce the power by one. Remember you can use your calculator for this. We do the same thing here. And then this one's easy, that's just 40. And then the 5,000, the derivative of that we know is zero. So there's our marginal cost function. We want to know what is the marginal cost when x is 200, 300, 400, and 600. So we're going to plug each one of these numbers into our marginal cost function. All right, so we're going to plug 200 into the marginal cost function here. Um, you can just use your calculator here, very straightforward um, entering this into your calculator. So I get 20. And remember that this is the slope of the tangent line at x equals 200. And this is telling me basically that if I produce one more unit, then the cost will rise by $20. So this is the additional cost for the 
101st unit. So this is the actual, what we defined as the actual cost to produce that next unit. So assuming we're already producing 200 units, this is the actual additional cost to produce that 201st unit, so that next unit. All right, we're going to do the same thing with each of these. Um, and I get, for this one I get 19. So this is the actual additional cost for producing the 301st unit. For the next one I get $24. So this is how much it will cost. If I'm already at current level of production of 400, this is how much it will cost to produce the 401st unit. And then if I plug 600 in place of where 200 is there, I get $52. So this is the actual cost that I will pay to produce the 601st unit. Now you might ask yourself why there was a big jump there to 52. Um, if you think about it, the more the more uh, of a commodity that you produce, the more workers that you need, the more um, the more manuf manufacturing plants you need. So you, it's in order to produce 600 units, you might have to build another plant, and the cost might increase dramatically to get to that level of production from 600 to 601. So um, there are a lot of factors here at play. All right, another application of our derivative will be the average cost function. Um, the average cost function is the total production cost divided by the number of units produced. And that makes sense. If it cost me $50 to produce 10 items, then I would take the total cost and divide it by the number of items. And of course, that would tell me on average, I'm paying about $5 a unit. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to use this formula here. Uh, this little bar above the C represents average, so you can say C bar, that's an average. So the average cost to produce each unit would be the total cost, which is given to us in that function, divided by the number of units. All right. So for example two here, it says the cust a custom office makes a line of executive desks. It is estimated that the total cost for producing um, X units of their senior executive model is represented by the following function. And so we're given our total cost function here. We're asked to find the average cost function. And I will ask you to do this on the exam. So if you think about an average, we're going to take the total cost. So we're going to take our function C of X and we're going to divide that by the total number of units produced. So let's form our C bar function. So C bar would be 94 times X plus 280,000 divided by X. Okay, so that's pretty simple there. All right, part B ask us to find the marginal average cost function. So remember marginal means we're gonna take the derivative of. So this tells us to take the derivative of the average cost function. Now, in previous sections, we have discussed that when you are going to take a derivative, then you can rewrite the original function that you're going to take the derivative of um, any way that you choose. So here's what I'm going to do before I actually take the derivative of this C bar function. I'm going to actually rewrite this a little bit. I am going to take the x that is in the denominator, and I'm going to divide it into both terms. So I'm going to take this x and I'm going to divide it into the first term. I'm going to take this x and divide it into the second term. So this is nice because my first term just becomes 94. The x is cancel. I'm going to go ahead and bring that x to the top of that second term. Of course, when we bring that x to the top of that fraction, the exponent is going to change signs and become negative. Now, the reason why I have decided to rewrite the original average cost function is because now when I go to find the derivative of this, the derivative of this is very easy to find. The first term is a constant term, so 94. The derivative of that is zero. So we're done with that. The next one I could just use the power rule. I can take my exponent of negative one and divide that by 280,000. 
So I get negative 280,000. Um, and I get x. And remember that we are decreasing the exponent by 1, so that becomes negative 2. So this makes the part b very easy. If I can rewrite the original average cost function, uh, the marginal average cost function is very simple to find. Now if I wished, I can go back and write this with only positive exponents. We don't have to do that, but sometimes it's nicer to work with something that has positive exponents. One observation that I want to point out here, one observation I want to make about the marginal average cost function, notice that this derivative here is always negative. Um, how do I know that? Well, the numerator is negative. The denominator is x squared. And each time I square something, that's always positive. So it's always a negative divided by a positive. And if that is always the case, then this fraction, of course, will always be negative. What this is telling me is telling me that the average cost function is always decreasing. So average cost is always going down, which uh, makes sense, I would say there. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, what happens to the average cost function when x is very large? So basically what we're being asked to find is something like this. We want to know the limit as x increases without bounds. So as x gets very, very large, meaning uh, the more units we produce, what happens to the average cost? And we've discussed it a little bit here. I'm going to take our average cost function. Okay, and where did that come from? Let's scoot back up here. Remember our average cost function, we can rewrite this and simplify as much as we please. And I've just taken a version of that average cost function from the part A, and I've put it right here. So this was the 94x divided by x. I canceled the x's out and I get 94. And 280,000, I left the x in the denominator there. Okay, so what happens as x goes to positive infinity? So what's happening to the overall function? So um, as x goes to infinity, 94 stays 94. Um, as x goes to infinity here, remember that when we have a constant divided by a variable, we end up getting a limit of 0 as x goes to infinity. So it looks like the average cost um, is approaching $94 as x increases without bound. Okay, so as x increases without bound, in other words, as as more units are produced, the average cost then will approach $94. So the average cost is going down um, and it's approaching, it's getting smaller and smaller and it's approaching, getting closer and closer to an average cost of $94.